Awesome. Welcome to the Price Plow Podcast. I have two guys on today that we've actually never had on the Price Plow Podcast. Dan's been on the Sirs before, but um, I couldn't think of a more fitting time, the end of 2020, a huge year for Ghost, to finally get Dan and Ryan on and get to talk. Uh, we're going to talk a lot of different things today. A lot of energy, but I think this will take us some, some, some distances. So, uh, guys, thank you so much for coming on, and uh, let's kick this off. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. It, it is pretty know. funny with how much we've done with you over the years that we actually haven't done um, a, uh, a podcast with Price Plow. And actually, I think this is only the second podcast Ryan and I have ever done together. Cool. Well, so I think the big topic today is Energy V2 is kind of what sparked this whole discussion. Um, so I understand there's some changes coming that uh, I guess I'll act like I don't already know about. And uh, let's, let's talk about how energy launched, because the last time we talked publicly was before launch. You know, we were just tasting it. How did the launch go? What brought on these changes? And uh, what can we expect in 2021? Yeah, all great questions. And I think um, learning the energy business has been a really cool experience for me and Ryan. I think if you just kind of zoom out for a second and think about 2020, um, you know, Ryan and I were having conversations about ghosts with people who now have no idea who ghost is like in the beverage category, whether beverage buyers or C stores or whatever it is. And, and, you know, when you take that in combination with, Hey, like our office has been empty, everyone's working from home. It's really just the two of us. It almost was like a throwback to the early days of just ideating and building ghost. So that kind of, you know, deja vu experience, I think was actually really cool. It's something that I think in looking back at this year is something that I'm going to be most grateful for uh, as a big silver lining from, from 2020. But to be able to tell that ghost story essentially from scratch and, and learn an entire new business, whether it's on the manufacturing side, the formulation side, just the, the business side of it, I think it's just been, it's been fun. Um, I mean, in our careers, you know, 10 years a piece or so uh, in actually be a student again. So that that is one takeaway for me that's been really cool. As far as performance wise, I mean, it's not really a secret. Um, I mean, it's been sold out everywhere, uh, the sell through and, and I think overall the feedback has been amazing. Um, you know, Ryan and I have always been I think they're really quiet about the numbers with ghosts and it's not important to us. Like I think at this far, this stage of the game, like we're not looking at the scoreboard, right? We're looking at what else we want to accomplish, what else we want to do. But what I'll say is in the beverage category, unfortunately it is a scoreboard driven, uh, mm -hmm. I think category. So, you know, the numbers and like rate of sale and all these kind of things we're looking at for the first time have all been really astounding and, and on par with benchmarks set by people like bang that frankly, I think like uh, without bang and what they achieved in the beverage category, there probably wouldn't be an opportunity for other sports nutrition brands like ghost to enter that space with any level of respect. So, um, you know, it's been, it's been cool to kind of, kind of see that. Um, but with, with all that and all of the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. Uh, we, as we say all the time, like we're growing and getting better every day. I think that there's a couple of things that, we wanted to kind of address before going to the broader market and, and launching in, in 21. Uh, and also just to ensure that, um, you know, everybody who's getting a can all over, not just in sports nutrition, but in, in their local convenience store or whatever, um, if they're getting one that was just fresh off the line or six months or a year or whatever it is, it's going to be a great experience. So um, it's been, uh, been a lot, been a fire hose. It's also yeah. been cool. I think there's a specific way that, that we or Ghost launches product um, receives feedback, evolves, gets better that, you know, we've done over the course of the last four and a half years in the powdered supplement space. But for us, I mean, this is an extension of what we built in powder. I know it's an entirely different business, but we're approaching it the same way. Like we want to launch the absolute best product and we want to continue to grow and get better every day with, regardless if it's our powder products, our ready to drink products, our food product, whatever it might be. Right. So we've sat, we, we've definitely, I mean, as Dan mentioned, it's been nothing but nothing but love since we launched this thing and it's been sold out everywhere, which has been incredibly humbling because, you know, this is an entirely new space for us, but at the same time uh, we did get some feedback and we're addressing it. What were some of the most unexpected hurdles you guys have had? Cause obviously I, I my understanding is there's differences in, in shipping. It's, it's a lot heavier to ship, right. Is it's a big thing, but also you guys went a lot more to wholesalers instead of strict, direct to consumer, right? So you opened up your doors to a lot of brick and mortars, uh, which is really cool to see ghosts do. And hopefully it's a, you know, foreshadowing of what's to come. Uh, but what are some of the things that you guys have had to deal with? Um, well, I'm going to say first of the smirk <laughs> that I think any of the hurdles were unexpected. I think we did our homework. We knew what the challenges would be before going into the space. 
anyways. So that's number one. I know I'm saying it like kind of uh, kind of funny, but it's true. Um, you're right. We we first gave the product, not just not just made it available to like independent um, specialty sports nutrition stores, but we actually gave it to them first before GNC, mm-hmm. before Vitamin Shop, before any of our other existing, before Anheuser Busch got it. And I think we wanted to do that it, it, to say, hey, number one, our beverages are going to be available everywhere, and number mm-hmm. two. Um, hopefully this is a small thing that we can do to kind of make up for the fact that our powders have previously been like only available in GNC or direct or what have you. Right. So we wanted to admit, like, those guys up first, um, which, and like, look, you know, overwhelmingly, I think people were super pumped to have it. Obviously it sold out. Uh, they, they were hitting us directly trying to get, get more. Um, so that was really cool to meet so many new, you know, business owners and, and brick and mortar retailers, uh, in, in that regard. I think second to that, we rolled into GNC and Vitamin Shop, and I think we had a, a pretty good idea of what to expect there, but it's always humbling to see, like, for example, Ghost has never sold anything in Vitamin Shop before. Mm-hmm. So to just see that resonate so well in Vitamin Shop right off the rip, I think was really cool. And I don't mind sharing that. Um, like, the number one selling, like, energy drink in Vitamin Shop since launch is the SPK Redberry. SPK Redberry. Uh, right. And it's actually the number one selling can there over the past six weeks and is actually like the number five or six ranked skew and beverage there only being beat by 12 packs or four packs and that's <laughs> the performance so um and look those are not things we usually even look at um but it's been it's been cool to cool to kind of see that and then kind of the last wave ryan and i have really over the last couple of months um had tons of meetings and tons of introduction meetings with you know wholesalers within the anheuser bush network with you know retailers like qt circle k um, you know, Speedway, 7-Eleven, Terribles, uh, you know, H-E-B. So it's really cool to see um, and, and tell, like I said at the beginning, is tell that story to all, to all those people. And, and uh, you know, Ghost Energy is going to be in a lot of places, you know, um, near you uh, next year. So Jan Feb, rolling out. Yeah, it was really big for me, just as someone who's kind of like in a different circles, in different circles of the industry, uh, previous to Ghost Energy launching, there was sometimes this like negative energy with brick and mortar has been talking about ghosts because it's, you know, exclusive to GNC or it was not shared in any of those channels. And because they couldn't have it, they would become negative about it. You know, obviously there's a lot of demand for it. People are walking in asking for it and they were going to get salty. If they don't have it. But the second you made it available, that negativity left, they were happy to have it. And it's, it's cool to see it opening up because I think that a lot of people eventually came to understand why you did it. And uh, I think they can see that it's coming. It, look, it's not easy. Um, it's it's ghost is still a small company right and i know that um you know hopefully and and again ryan especially with the work he's on with the branding and marketing it's amazing when you make something look and feel really good like people just assume you're so much bigger than you are we're we're a really small company still from a people standpoint from a distribution standpoint we're still nailing down processes internally and you know we've always said we're playing the long game and we don't want to bite off more than we can chew it's incredibly tough to ship to you know, I mean, right now with beverage, with beverage, we're shipping to something like, I mean, I don't know, almost exponentially more places than we were a year ago. There's just resources and process and things. That, so just to make sure that we're doing a good job, as good a job, you know, with the brand uh, mm-hmm. on the front uh, as we are in, in the, the business in the back, um, that's kind of why we wanted to kind of go slow. But it's been cool to work work with some of these people for the first time. And you're right. Um, a lot of that negativity, you know, suddenly never happened. So, yeah. Okay. It's, it's we're, here, we're here for it, you know, it's all, it's all good. It's uh, in starting a business and look, we, we've been blessed to have um, some success out of the gate and, and really um, it's kind of snowballed over the last couple of years. But I think one of the most important things is to, uh, to ensure that you don't, as Dan said, bite off more than you can chew. And we've tried to stay consistent in that message from day one, not just externally, but with our team internally. You know, we've got a rock a solid year planned for 21. And like we've also communicated to our marketing team, like there's probably a lot of other stuff that we really would like to do, but we got to focus. Like we want to make sure that we never become the brand that tries to do, you know, too many launches to where you're never executing to the level that you'd really like to on a specific one. We took the same approach in retail. It's like, of course, we'd like to, you know, hook up some of these people that have been day one supporters, right? But at the same time, we want to be able to deliver that ghost experience there, right? And I don't think we, we felt like we were able to do that so early on, because uh, as Dan said, you know, we're still a relatively small team from a people perspective. No company, so, no business owner ever celebrates saying no to purchase orders, right. no to demand. But we just yeah. always wanted to put, you know, put doing it right above the dollars. And 
for sure. Uh, yeah, and it's also because it hasn't been day one. Dan and I never really talked about, hey, here's how much money this thing needs to, to throw off, right? It's been about here's how we want to grow it, and here's the ultimate goal from a brand perspective. However long it takes us to get there, we're fine with that. Yeah, and I definitely can say – However big it gets or doesn't get. Right, that's the other thing. Yeah. It's like you want to test the hypothesis of you know, how big can we make ghosts without ever sacrificing our commitment to doing it right or the way that we want to do the brand or the products and the innovation or just the fun that we have. We're never gonna we're never gonna sacrifice those things. So however big the business around us gets by staying true to those things, that's humbling and that's really cool to see. But you know, as Ryan said, like we never talked about it or set those goals. So the like, the coolest part though, specifically with that, I think is that we do have people around. Dan and I have been adamant from day one to surround ourselves with people that make us better, right? And we've, we've got leadership in addition to Dan and I that have helped in areas that were not as strong, right? And it's hard, um, I think, from Dan and I's perspective, we have this vision and how we wanna grow it, right? And sometimes those dollars become part of the discussion. And you know, if, it's incredibly cool to go into the energy space in the same way, really, that we built the brand in the powdered space, and see the kind of excitement and success that we're having early on because it makes us kind of double down on everything that we thought from day one, right? right? So it makes those conversations a little bit easier on our end because look, it's not easy saying, hey, here's how we want to do things when you're partnered with Anheuser-Busch or you've got a board and all this stuff, right? But it's been cool to see. I mean, even for me, Dan's taken the point um, on a lot of those initial, especially in the selling season, like he had his first selling season, you know, he hits me up every day and tells me how much fun these meetings are because it's like a, just a different level of excitement that we haven't had on the powdered space because it's an entirely different audience, right? Mm -hmm. And I jumped on last week. We were out in Vegas doing some end of year planning and, and on some big, you know, two, 300 person Zoom calls. And it was really cool, at least from my perspective, to see the excitement at, from these retailers, wholesalers, right? In a space that we, as Dan mentioned, knew nothing about. Right. Um, so it's, it's cool to see the brand resonate as we kind of jump lines. Do you think yeah, a lot of that has- Everyone thinks that we're, like Ghost is a big company, nothing will nothing will take you back or ground you quicker than being on one of these calls, as Ryan said, and no one knows who the heck we are. Right? <laughs> it's awesome that Ryan are, they don't know who Ghost is, they don't know, you know, and, and I mean, that's really cool. And it, it just it reinforces again what this what it's all about for us, because if we can leave that call with 300 strangers all of a sudden becoming big Ghost fans, like that's that's what this is all about and, right. and not only not only i think is that representing the company that and the brand that we're building well i really do hope that you know everyone listening to this feels like we're representing our industry well that mm -hmm. we feel like we are an industry and market that we love and have been fans of you know our entire life so i think that's that's again what it's all about for us you know we're obviously you know, with this category growing and, and with, with Ghost as a brand, you know, growing year over year, that, that, stuff's, that stuff's great, but we are truly in it for the love of the game, and I can't say that enough. That's a great parallel that I know Dan and I have talked about a lot with, like, uh, elevating our industry and legitimizing it for other industries to see and, and accept us. Do you think that a lot of that excitement is you guys bringing, like, full efficacious doses? You think that, is that exciting at all to people outside of supplements? Because I know that in supplements, that's a huge deal. This can is a huge deal for us in here, but do the people who sell or distribute or whatever, Monster, Bang, Red Bull, do they care about this stuff? We're educating them on it, okay. right? I mean, I, I think number one, it's a trend in any CPG or any food category right now. I think of just like transparency and seeing what you're putting in your body. Sure. So I think the full disclosure part of it or, or the you know, the, the transparent labeling part of it, that's something that's easy to understand that I think they all get. As far as talking through the doses and delivering full efficacy, you know, that's something that we're educating them on saying, look, the, the bangs and the, and the reins of the world, I think they did a good job at, at convincing consumers, you know, you want something better than a traditional energy drink, right? Just caffeine water, you know, you want something more, whether it's super creatine uh, or, or <laughs> amino acids or whatever, whatever it is, right? They did a good job at educating customers that they're looking for more. I think sometimes the best innovation isn't miles, it's inches. And I think all we've done, you know, with, for example, the licensed flavors, which is they love and they understand that really, like we took a trend of, hey, candy flavors are trending. Let's, let's take it, let's move it forward another couple inches and do it the authentic way. With the efficacy and the formula side of it, it's, hey, there's this trend towards energy drink plus. Now let's just move it forward a couple inches and actually deliver 
you know, the efficacy that people are maybe being promised or that they're looking for, we're actually going to deliver on it, right? So instead of just saying there's amino acids in there and, and like, look, you know, anyone savvy breaking down one of those labels sees that the amino acids fall behind caffeine. If there's 300 mg of caffeine, there's less than 300 mg of super creatine and aminos or whatever else, right, in there. So, you know, all we're doing is saying, hey, you're looking for these things. You're looking for something more than just an energy drink. We're actually delivering on it. So again, it, to me, is that game-changing, earth-shattering innovation? Um, maybe, maybe not. Not for me to judge, but but for us, we're just saying, hey, here's where the market's going. We're just going to take it that one step further um, in a way that we feel is right and we feel uh, is authentic to Ghost. Where it becomes game-changing, I think, is uh, when you zoom out a little bit and look at that on a macro level and look at each individual bucket, right? that we've kind of taken from, you know, from day one, really, we say, okay, we want to launch this brand ghost. How can we innovate on the packaging front? How can we innovate on the brand front? How can we innovate on the social media front, the efficacy front, the flavor front, all of those, right? How can we check every box? Because I don't think Dan and I are smart enough to know which one of those things is the, the thing that ultimately resonates with everybody, but one of those things will, right? So if we can enter the energy space and say, hey, we'll bring new flavors, we'll bring a badass looking can will bring a fully fully disclosed you know fully efficacious drink to the market then you start to say okay regardless of why that person's entering the cooler we're space we're and reaching for an energy we're drink we'll bring it as a right well it. distribution partnership like there's so many things that one of which we don't know is the thing that's going to make us great or better than the rest but we want to make sure that we check every box and we make sure that we hedge our bets in every front to make sure this thing's successful that's huge you guys have a lot of resources to pull on. We get a ton. <laughs> like I, we, I mean, look, we, those are things that um, humbly, I think we created, right? Over, over the years. And yeah. I, I think it also, it's also something like, you know, as Ryan was saying, like you check every box. I don't think ghost does anything if we don't know how to check every box, mm -hmm. you know? And like, look, if we had the flavors, we had the formula, we had the packaging and all that, but then we weren't able, like, why would we not, try to want like why like why would we launch you know into the beverage world checking all those boxes but not thinking about distribution or partnerships differently too mm -hmm. you know so really on every front it's important to us to try to innovate um and yeah look i, I agree i agree kind of with, with what ryan was saying is that the sum of all of that maybe that's where it's game changing but any individual part maybe like i said it's inches so right cool well let's get a little nitty-gritty i know that we got some big changes coming uh well, I don't know if some big, there's, there's at least one big change. There's a couple of small changes. Uh, what are people going to expect from V2 and how did we get here? Sure. So um, from V2, I think, uh, you know, number one, we're celebrating the launch of V2 with a new flavor. Um, people will hear it here first, but Sour Patch Kids, Blue Raspberry, the Blue Kid is coming to the can, uh, nice. rolling out literally like over the next couple of weeks. So um, that's going to be a big thing. Um, you know, number two, I think the goal was how do we make sure that the flavor experience is super consistent across all cans, uh, no matter how far it was shipped or how long it sat or any of that kind of stuff, right? Um, and, and I think also we wanted to address like some of the smell that, you know, some people were saying, hey, there's like a little bit of a, a vinegar or fit, I don't know, whatever, whatever people were, were saying there. So we wanted to look at how we can, how we can um, you know, I think, improve on, on some of those, those things. Um, we did open heart surgery on this thing. We tried to figure out every which way, hey, what are we doing differently? What's going on here? Um, we third party tested rigorously, you know, uh, the breakdown of different, uh, of the different active ingredients to figure out what could be contributing to this. And uh, we learned something big. Um, we, we learned something big that uh, I think is, is going to definitely get some attention from, uh, I think, the, the uh, you know, industry um, diehards and, and kind of critics here. But um, acetyl L carnitine specifically uh, is not stable in solution over a period of time. And that period of time can be impacted by temperature, can be in uh, impacted by pH level, can be in impacted by all sorts of different, different things. Um, so uh, in looking at that, we're like, whoa, like, you know, there's a good chance that acetyl L carnitine, um, especially in, in, in some of these cans, was breaking down into two things acetic acid and just L-carnitine essentially uh, by the acetyl group disassociating. When that happens, like, well, what's, what's acetic acid, right? Acetic acid is vinegar, 
like when you start thinking about it, like, oh man, like if somebody's had a less than ghost flavor experience, or if someone smelled like kind of this vinegar smell, that is exactly what was happening. And we worked hard with like Lanza, for example, who's probably the, the foremost leading authority on carnitine in the world on understanding what factors would lead to the breakdown and what we can do to prolong it. And essentially the answer is you can't. So whether you have a lot of like, we have having a full gram of acetyl carnitine in our product, whether you have a lot in your product or even just a little bit, the reality is most likely is breaking down into L-carnitine and the acetic acid and you're not actually ingesting at the point of ingestion, Alcar, right? So you're not gonna get the effect of the desired, you know, kind of nootropic effect from Alcar that you're looking for in the first place. What do we do about it? What does Ghost do about that to ensure that we're still bringing a ton of value and if anything, maybe improving the product um, you know, uh, versus I know people will probably just, just lean on just taking it out or putting the straight out carnitine mm -hmm. or something. So, uh, we are launching with, um, Carnipure branded, uh, carnitine L tartrate in the full gram in the place of acetyl carnitine in the gram. Um, is the effect of the function the same? No, of course not. Right. Acetyl carnitine, of course, crosses the blood brain barrier more effectively, has more of a nootropic, let's say kind of goal or effect there. Uh, Carnipure, you know, carnitine L tartrate has more of, let's say a, a metabolism, um, you know, almost like a, uh, um, like a, a, like metabolism and kind of like a, that, that type of goal. Right. So I think that that's, that's, is it a small function change? Sure, but I think, you know, with the alpha GPC and with Neurofactor, um, you know, in the product still, I think you have a strong case to say, hey, this is still a great kind of nootropic focused product as well. And then, you know, obviously a more stable um, and I think improved product from adding Carnipure. The other thing we did, which I know will probably go unappreciated by most, but probably appreciated by my boy Ben and definitely <laughs> Justin from Supplement Snoop. Um, is we did uh, we did change the source of of, um, of some of the vitamins to a more bioavailable source. So we switched over to methylcobalamin and P5P respectively on the B vitamin front. In addition, we did remove a couple of B, B vitamins, specifically the thiamine, because uh, thiamine we found can over time uh, contribute to more of a roasted kind of you know flavor. And you know it also looking at just like the expiration date of these things and how B vitamins break down. We actually were, if we want to extend the expiration date past the 14 months that's on it now, we probably have to add even more. So I don't want to add insult to injury. So we removed thiamine, um, which we know no one's going to really miss. And we switched the other B vitamins to um, a more bioavailable source. So net net uh, improved the source of the most important vitamins. Net net, we added carnipure, uh, L -car carnitine L tartrate in place of the acetyl carnitine. And I think we've, you know, definitely addressed the smell. We've de definitely addressed any flavor breakdown and we're going to have a much better product that's shelf stable and going to deliver a ghost experience no matter where you're getting it. Nice. Cool. Seems simple, cut and dry. Um, I don't think the, the carnitine change is all that serious. I'm sure there's always naysayers. Did you guys consider looking at other nootropic ingredients instead, or was it kind of just an easy change for you guys? Um, I like carnitine for a couple of reasons. And I think one reason is I think carnitine has a traditional place in energy drinks. It just does. Not, not carnipure branded and not in an efficacious like full dose, but I think carnitine has like a, a kind of traditional home and energy drink. So I think with, with us wanting to kind of pay homage to, to that in, in a ghost way, it was important for us to keep in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously we use like, for example, Cognizant in, in uh, Ghost Gamer, um, that, that could have been, an, like there's, there's several other places we could have gone, but I felt like overall this change was most true to where we went with Ghost Energy V1. And also is most true to kind of, I think, some of the fish in the energy drink category. Perfect. Well, I think in addition to that, you guys also, this isn't totally V2, but you also did add the two-tone coloring to the packaging. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think like, you know, I, I think the goal with, with the two-tones, we were two-tones right off the rip, right, with the licensed flavors, with the collab flavors. So I think it made sense to kind of, you know, bring that over to, to these guys. I like the monochromatic can. I think it's like super clean, but this, uh, this uh, gives us a lot more freedom. I think Ryan, you can speak to some of that. It gives us a lot more freedom as we talk about more flavors coming out down the, down the line. Um, gives us a lot more, I think, kind of runway to mess with two different color, color tones in just a moment. Right. And specifically, like if you have another orange flavor, for example, right? Given the two tones, we can actually do another orange flavor versus if we were to have like a, an orange cream or something like that, it would be very close to the tropical mango can. So just gives us uh, more freedom. It gives us a better looking, I think, overall aesthetic on shelf in the cooler too. 
Yeah, I love the monochromatic look. I thought it was really, really clean. Yeah. But when I saw the newer ones, I was like, that's really, I mean, it's, it's more exciting. It's, very, it's definitely yeah. more ghost, you know? So that, that's awesome. Cool. So let's talk 2020. I think that uh, there's been a lot of discussion, different brands, different, you know, a lot of stuff behind the scenes of what's gone on. And uh, I've been a huge proponent of Ghost this year just because I think I got to play a lot of video games with you, to be honest. <laughs> and it was, it, was, <laughs> it was cool spending a lot of time with you guys. Um, can we just talk about what you guys did this year? Because I, I think it was a huge, it was, it was massively understated during, like, in the trenches. No one was really talking about what you guys were doing. And now that we're looking back, it was such a crazy year. I want to recap things a little bit. So, Dan, I, I, I know you've, you've almost prepared for this. I know it runs through your head almost. I mean, can we just defer to our buddy Josh Shaw? Uh, I mean, look, okay. <laughs> I don't know if you saw Josh's video, um, you know, very humbled. Because Josh is such a, a deep and, I think, real understanding of our industry far more than just what's on the surface, yeah. um, to kind of top his list of, of five brands that won in 2020 is, is humbling. It's our third year in a row. And I think his words uh, that uh, Ghost 2020 will go down in history is one of the better years or best years for any brand ever. Um, those are big words to live up to. So we don't take them lightly. And if anything, I take that as a challenge to continue to beat it next year. Um, you know, we're not celebrating any of that now. But um, I think I think this year, and, and I'm going to defer to Ryan in a sec, but I think this year, the big thing for me is we didn't slow down at all. And I think if anything, we sped up, we moved faster, uh, we um, honed our craft in, in several ways. And I think that this was a year that it would have been easy to kind of make excuses. I think a lot of brands and a lot of categories, a lot of industries, not just sports nutrition, did use 2020, oh, I'll write it off, oh, whatever, it's a COVID year. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, we went the opposite way. We said, hey, uh, this is an opportunity for us to continue to excel. This is an opportunity to be there for our fans when maybe they need us. You know, I think we recognize and own maybe more than any other brands that, that sports nutrition and supplements in general, like say supplement means in addition to, these are not necessities to live. So they better be innovative. They better be fun. And we bring that into everything that we do. So even with something as, let's say, stupid as people spending uh, 10 minutes a week with us on our YouTube channel or tuning into Warzone Wednesdays, you know, with us or playing with us actually on like a, in a ghost uh, Warzone lobby or the Legends Play uh, that Ricky rolled out um, as part of the Ghost Gamer stuff on, on Mondays now, um, maybe that 10, 15 minutes or hour that, that fans spending with us is important because it's a break from the craziness of the world or a break from the scary news cycles. And I think like we wanted to be there and provide the fun, provide entertainment, provide maybe a subject change for a lot of people this year. And we did it while the world was dealing with a lot of craziness. Well, think about ghosts and sitting here at HQ in Chicago, what the city of Chicago dealt with this year. The city was literally on fire on June 1st on Ghost's birthday this year, right outside our window. Like the police cars flipped it. I mean, it, it was a crazy thing to see. But what did Ghost do? I mean out there scrubbing graffiti off the walls out there didn't mess didn't miss a single youtube episode to continue to be there out there accepting the challenge that hey maybe ghost as a brand had some things to get better at too and i think that that for me like no matter whatever product launch numbers or anything that we can we can share that to me is the big takeaway from the year is that we use this year to get better and and this year to grow and this year to actually speed up not make excuses yeah, I think, um, you know, I don't think it's any secret, <clears throat> both Dan and I and Ghost as a brand has been all gas from 2016 on. Um, even from a personal perspective, I don't think Dan and I have taken a second uh, to even think about our personal life at all in the last four and a half years. That's why he didn't and, have a driver's license, people. That's why he didn't have a <laughs> truth, Truthfully, we had a conversation about this, but like that's the shit that slips through the cracks when you're just head down all the time. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's funny because like then you, you know, you take it for granted. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go get a driver's license and I just fail miserably. But, you know, those are the types of things, and that's a silly example, but those are the types of things that mm -hmm. you just don't think about when you're head down trying to grow something like this. And... You know, 2020, in my eyes, um, while we definitely kept our foot on the gas, it was an entirely different way than we had had in the past. 
Um, and that really wasn't planned whatsoever. I mean, obviously, if you ask Dan and I going into 2020, we're like, we're going to crush it this year. You know, we're going to continue to beat our previous best, right? But then, you know, everything happens with 2020 and COVID and, and shutdowns and everything. Um, and it actually gave us an opportunity to slow down in a lot of ways, personally, take a step back, maybe look at the business from a 10,000 foot view, look at maybe some areas that were a little weak in going into, you know, a partnership with ABI or uh, a 2021, 2022, where we're trying to, you know, take over the world, right? Well, what could bite us in the ass? And it gave an opportunity for Dan and I to sit down and focus on that and get better in those areas and plug those holes, right? It also gave us an opportunity to connect with our community and our audience in a really authentic, organic way that I, I don't know. I'm not smart enough to know if that still happens without a year like this, right? I mean, we had planned on dropping a gaming product. I have no idea the impact that gaming product would have had if it wasn't for a year like 2020. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dan and I flew over 400,000 miles last year. I'd be a little hard pressed to say that we could stream twice a week if that was the case, right? But the fact is, is that 2020 happened and we were able to plug into some of these areas, which a lot of which, if we're being honest, Dan, a lot of the stuff that we did plug in terms of the holes or weaknesses we had, a lot of that stuff nobody's ever going to see, right? A lot of it's infrastructure, supply chain, um, you know, even from a legal perspective, there's just a million things that we worked on this year that shored up this business to ensure that we can continue to be successful 2021 and beyond, right? That nobody's ever going to see. But also mm -hmm. from a community perspective, <clears throat> content perspective, product perspective, we were able to drop new products and build a deeper connection with our audience than we ever could have if it wasn't for a year like this year. So we leaned into what we do best this year and it ultimately worked out. I don't think uh, we deserve any kind of kudos for that. I think it was just us being us and, and the team being the team and the brand being the brand. And it ultimately worked, and resonated with people because unlike any other year in history, everybody fucking dealt with this shit this year. There's not a single person out there that wasn't impacted by 2020. Regardless of how you were impacted, you were impacted. So simply sharing that and connecting with people during a year like that is obviously going to work. Right. Yeah. So it was a hell of a year um, in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, we're very blessed to have had the success that we had this year, but I don't think Dan and I went into it saying, how can we be successful amidst everything that, that's going on right now? I think we, stopped for a second, focused on the business, looked at what we can do better and played some fucking video games. Yeah, I told, I told Ben this, that um, it's better to be lucky than good. And I think we're confident and comfortable enough to admit, admit when we get a little bit lucky. Um, sure. game, gamer, Greens and Glow. I mean, three launches that could not have been more timely in a year like 2020. Those things were years in the works. Like our partnership with New Level was something that I was negotiating last year, supply side in right. October. Um, you know, the greens and, the, and, and sourcing each one of those greens, I mean, that goes back almost a year. That was one of the most complicated yep. products for us to put together. Uh, the GLOW project is something we're working on with several of our athletes now for, for six months, three years. So to drop all of those in the middle of a pandemic where all of a sudden health and wellness becomes maybe a bigger priority, people are playing more video games than ever. I mean, that's, that's something that we didn't really, again, better to be lucky than good. Launching energy with Anheuser-Busch in a year that, again, uh, you know, beverage is, is kind of exploding where, I mean, frankly, let's just zoom out and look at the business side. I know that's not usually a topic we talk about, but, you know, you know, bang breaks up with the Anheuser-Busch system. And then they've also got ghosts as a shiny new toy. I mean, what could, I mean, that's, that's great. Um, but specifically with, you know, for example, we'll take the greens product, right? Obviously it has immunity or uh, immune health benefits, right? But never wants to be marketed that way during a pandemic, right? And I think a lot of brands probably use the pandemic to exploit their their audience. I think with us, it was just a continuation of the ghost story. Yo, here's what here's what we've got loaded up for this year. Here's why, and here's kind of that organic story just playing out in real time. Sure, yeah, there's luck involved, multi but our multivitamin. So we worked on a multivitamin back in like 2016. It was a, so one of the very first things I asked Ryan to do in 2015 or 2016 and looking at the initial products and launch with was put together a multivitamin comp of the market. 
like Optimen, Vitagym. I mean, the market today of, of great products is way different than what was on that initial comp. It's been in the works that long because there's just so many freaking ingredients in it. And then straight up, I, I know Ben, we've j- joked about this and I told Chris Waldrum this from Inspired, but when Inspired dropped their multivitamin, I think in 2019, it looked a lot like what I had in my head. So rather than drop ours, we went back to the drawing board and came out with something that we felt was, was unique and different in the market. So again, that was a launch. It was a long time in the works. Dropping Bubblicious in the middle of a, of a pandemic, which is super fun, super nostalgic. I mean, we didn't plan to drop it then. It just, again, it was a really cool story of a, a throwback, like kind of cool memory in a time that I think we all needed it. Dropping- I was going to bring up the... I was going to bring up the multivitamin specifically because, uh, Dan, a few times you've mentioned that uh, that sold out so quickly you didn't expect it. But kind of going back to what you were talking about with uh, Greens, Glow, uh, Gamer, you guys, like, first and foremost create a community and then just provide solutions to these people, you know? You, like, obviously multi is not a sexy category. It's not something you expect people to jump all over. But when you have Unless a community... Unless you're in your 30s, Ben. I will tell you that I was very excited for this multi. <laughs> But, but you have a community that has already bought into your brand. They're already excited about it. You offer them a solution that isn't boring Optimum, sorry, Optimum, or, you know, GNC's Mega Man. Like, I, I, that stuff's awesome and great. But if you can pull them further into this brand that they're already blown up on, I mean, I, I wasn't surprised if it sold out. I think it makes sense for you guys. And, and this year, obviously, we saw letters go out from the FDA to brands that were doing click funnels on COVID. Uh, thankfully, you guys weren't on that list, but it was just a perfect time. Make or market a single product for immunity during all this, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I think we're proud of that. Again, we're not we're not opportunistic. Uh, we don't think opportunistically at all. I mean, if anything, we're just kind of following the things that we want, that our community wants, that we think is right. I think you saw that this year. And the fact that sure. time worked out the way it did is, is amazing. Um, yeah. So that's kind of how it goes. But, you know, look, I, I know... Um, I guess to give some context, and I don't mind sharing a little bit of, of a kind of some of the, the launch numbers, but, you know, number one, I mean, shout out to Ryan for 64 new pieces of apparel this year. Uh, killed it with the apparel <laughs> program. Uh, I, I think total SKUs was what, Ryan? I mean, something like 61 powder and then 10 in, in beverage. Uh, um, or five, five in beverage and 61 in, in, in powder, which is, uh, you know, huge. We planted 83,000 trees almost. Um, with, you know, our partnership with One Tree Planted. Um, you know, we supported a great organization here in the city, uh, M3, My Block, My Hood, My City, which, you know, helped. Uh, they, their initial goal was helping small businesses, specifically minority-owned business and Black-owned businesses in Chicago that were really uh, hurt by COVID. And, you know, we supported them, you know, with, with some cash and also supporting them with, like, Ryan's helping them with some apparel stuff and uh, participating in a 5K. I mean, we, we really roll up our sleeves and, you know, whether it's a SKU count, whether it's a dollar a day a week, I mean, we really did everything that we could this year, I think, to, to keep the keep foot on the metal, uh, pedal of the metal. But Ryan was in a 5K? You, I ran a 5K, man. Wow. Dude, I was, I was actually hitting my stride, okay, before uh, – but it really all started. The, the decline for me started when I failed my driver's exam. Um, and then I, you know, in short order, tore my bicep and uh, got locked into the office. Wow. But, you know, it was a it was a rough couple month patch, but before that, I did run a five k. Jeez, okay. first time ever. So, yeah, not to make light of all those numbers though. Any and 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 Dan and I did mention a lot of those numbers were Canada too, which a lot of brands can't seem to manage very well or uh, do it the right way. Um, you guys on all fronts were uh, just blown it away this year, and, and I don't think a lot of people got to see it because of the shroud of twenty twenty and COVID kind of uh, putting the blinders on a lot of brands' eyes. Yeah, one surviving. Really, numbers are numbers. That's why we don't really share them that often. I mean, even even me saying the five or ten beverage skews, right? I mean, it's like, well, there's five flavors, but then there's ten skews kind of the twelve packs, and people don't realize that from like Ryan's perspective on design or like the operational or logistics or the warehouse side, like that is ten, and it's very important because there's double the yeah. work, double everything that goes into it. Um, Canada specifically, you know, look. Do Canada right? I said this on Andrew Calvino's podcast, um, Content Inspired, that international is very easy to do. It's very difficult to do it correctly. And mm-hmm. you know, Canada, I mean, those labels are essentially, in some cases, trilingual labels, right? Because you need English and French, and then if you're using a botanical or an animal part, you need the Latin. So 
that's hard to fit all that on a label in the right mm-hmm. way. And by the way, register new NPNs and get all that kind of stuff out. And then hear that like, Health Canada is, is inundated and moving slow too. So um, the Canadian launch, I forget the exact number of SKUs that that was, um, but that was a huge deal for us to finally get out locally available in Canada um, and some great partners there. Um, you know, so uh, Sup King and Southern World and, and Popeyes and, and GNC, North of the Border, Bulldog, uh, Shop Santé out, out uh, uh, in Quebec. So um, that's been a great partnership to finally do, I mean, um, as well. So a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. The new partnerships with, uh, like I said, Welch's and Burn Black. Burn Black was a huge launch for us this year. That went huge. really well. Um, Bubblicious, Nutter Butter. Um, I mean, so, so much, yeah, it's crazy. It's, it, this year's a blur. Uh, the fact that it's already December and it's already almost 21, it's, it's, um, it's, uh, it's all kind of a, a blur. Yeah. I forgot what Nutter Butter and Bubblicious were, uh, this year until I started taking numbers for the, for the year. It, it feels like an eternity ago before all of this stuff, which is just pretty wild. Um, yeah. it's huge. And it's funny, you, you say that you guys don't talk numbers. And what's funny about it is that you guys, like, you know, there's a lot of brands out there that will throw their numbers around. They'll post screenshots to Shopify and they'll, they'll throw all that around. But you guys don't need to talk numbers because on a weekly basis, I get people coming to me for content that say they're going to be the next ghost. And it's not a quantitative thing, right? It's, you know, be the next, be the first. Dude, <laughs> you know? I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't understand why the world today is so hell bent on seeing something that they they view as successful it's not even important if it is or not they view it as successful and they just want to kind of carbon copy it um i tell a story a lot you know of, of when i was at cellucor and you know why the cellucor target is yellow like it, I simply we turned it yellow because all the other major colors were taken and we just wanted to do it like and nowadays that would never happen nowadays it'd be like oh infrared's hot with ghosts let's make our shit infrared like what, what happened to just origin, I don't know, originality. Um, so I'd say to anyone coming with you that just be the, be the first you trust me, stick to your guns. That's good enough. And the market would, and the you know community out there will appreciate it. But I think again, like we don't talk numbers because the game's not over. Right. You know, it's, it's way too early to look at the scoreboard. I mean, I, I'm, I'm excited, you know, to look back at, you know, whatever legacy Ryan and I are trying to build here. Like I say, try to elevate the whole industry. I'm excited to look back and, and see really, how that's re- regarded but right now is not the time at least for us and look if you're a brand or you're a brand owner that is posting those things and that's and you've got your reasons to do it more power to you you know no no disrespect whatever that's that's your approach and your path we just would rather let our work and the impact that we're making speak for itself sure uh and i think probably the last big topic that i definitely want to bring up because i get asked it pretty much every q a now is your supposed biggest partner this year went bankrupt, and how did that affect your your year? What did that uh, that, that slap you in the face? What did you have to do to combat that? <clears throat> Ryan, I'm gonna let you answer that one because you're actually not as involved in some of the GNC those discussions. So I'm, I'll let you answer from your perspective. Uh, from from my perspective, I mean, as you would expect, something like that is um, stressful. Uh, however, again. I think when we've been faced with any adversity, regardless of what it is, we lean into what we do best. And our direct consumer site took the hell off this year, right? And we were able to, to actually spend more time with the ghost community, the ghost audience um, the, on our website and on our social, right? So for us, it helps strengthen the ghost brand within the community. And, you know, I think we, we just leaned in what we're good at. And ultimately, like, sure, obviously your biggest retail partner, uh, I mean, look, forget the bankruptcy for a second, when they shut their doors for COVID uh, is massively stressful. I mean, if that's the only channel that your product's in, I mean, regardless, like, I think everybody was impacted if you have a product in retail this year, to a degree, right? But to be in with one partner and have them shut their doors, like, of course, that, that uh, takes a toll, uh, both on the brand and mentally it stresses us the hell out. Um, but at the same time, I think we leaned into to what we do best and, and leaned into the community and the e-com team that we've got and the website and, you know, cracked the top 10 K websites last week in go. the U S. Yeah. I think so, to, to, to add to that too, um, it's really important, uh, for any brand out there to really think about how you are partnered with your retail partners. And, um, there have been a lot of brands that have been exclusive 
either fully or is partially excluded from GNC over the years that really, um, I'm sorry, use GNC as a crutch. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to name anyone, but they had a lot of like little beads in their stuff. And they, <laughs> they, they use GNC as a crutch, I think, to say like, look, like we're X big or we're growing at X pace. But the question is like, well, what does your brand uh, stand for outside of GNC? Do people yeah. outside of GNC know who you are and are shopping you outside of GNC? And, and for Ghost, like GNC has been a phenomenal partner to our, of, of ours over the years. It's definitely a destination retail store to go and, and instant gratification, go buy Ghost now, where we obviously put so much time and energy in the labels to, to go and be able to un, like feel that or see it firsthand or get a sample. I mean, that, that's been how we've, we've really partnered with GNC over the years. But I mean, as Ryan said, we have a top 10,000 website in the U.S. We're in 56 countries around the world. The GNC is not, um, like, like Ghost is not defined by our relationship with GNC. And although I fully appreciate all the Facebook pundits that were predicting our doom this year uh, when, when GNC went through that hard time, uh, to them I say, you know what? We grew, number one. And number two, just to show you the type of partner that we are, uh, it's been three months since GNC exited bankruptcy and we're still fucking exclusive because we stand by our partners even when they go through a tough time. So you again, you can, you should never let any retailer, no matter, this isn't about something, this is about any industry or whatever you're in. Like you, you should never let a partnership or partner define your entire business. You, you need to define your business and your community defines your business. Um, and I think that that really showed uh, through this whole thing. And, um, you know, look, Truth, we're a huge partner with GNC in 21 and, and, and beyond, um, you know, period. This says and a lot about your brand. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ben. I would say across the board, I've known you guys for some years now. Your partnerships mean a lot to you. You know, I've seen you guys uh, piss off some uh, generally large distributors out there because you won't take a meeting with them because you have a good relationship with people. You stick by, you know, whether it's your boy, it's your partnership, it's your friends, it's your trading partner, whatever. You guys create a really great sense of community and that carries through, right? So whether or not Gene sees you better. You know what I'm going to say verbatim there. <laughs> I know a lot of things you might say right there. Who you go to battle with is that? Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I literally like no. I know I say it a lot. It's broken records yeah. at this point. Who go to battle is everything. Yeah, but specifically, specifically, in a year like this, forget bankruptcy for a second. Look, look at the year that we've had, right? In the pandemic, mm -hmm. if you are not just a sports nutrition brand, if you're any brand, CPG brand that sells products in retail, and you didn't prioritize your community, your relationships online, or your ecom or brand digitally you are fucked this year, right. right? Because you can't go back and then say, oh, let's start building a community now 10 years in, right? If all you focused on from day one was putting your product on shelf and selling, right? Versus actually spending real time with your audience online and giving them a unique experience digitally. Right. You then were hit with a pandemic and now you've, you're scrambling, right? So yeah, it's been, those are the brands that probably have experienced the biggest turmoil this year. I mean, you guys did a lot of both too. You also uh, support your people that sell it too. I mean, uh, Ghost Energy, you guys gave a lot of small retailers the opportunity to bring foot traffic into their stores this year, which was in a year where specialty is really hurting because people can't go out of their houses. That was probably very helpful for a lot of people. Yeah. And look, it's, it's worthwhile saying too, that as we continue to grow Ghost and as you know, there are more opportunities to probably work with us down the road um, that we don't really ever aspire to be the brand that's available to everyone and everywhere for the simple reason that if we were, we would never be able to work with you or support you, uh, support that store in the way that we want. It's right. really, we are all about real partnerships. So whether it's talking to, for example, Jacob at TNS and like, Hey, how can we make ghost energy or even the ghost line one day, you know, unique uh, and like that, that presence unique and, and the brand big in your store that those are the conversations we're having. And that's why we're not, we don't aspire to be available everywhere. Like mm -hmm. we, Ryan and I obviously were huge sneaker guys. And I think we've always admired how Nike, this massive global brand still has really special partnerships with like an individual local sneaker store. And I think that that's kind of how we're thinking about this. It's not about the bottom line. It's not about the POs. It's about, Hey, anywhere that we go, how can we position ghosts uniquely uh, in that channel? And how can we do something special for that channel? So let me ask you then, cause uh, Nike has obviously like their, cheap running shoes available at finish line, but they also have their Jordans LeBrons at 
you know, exclusive stores. Is that how you would view Ghost Energy being available at C stores versus, you know, your special powders just on your site? Because because you are in some ways getting available like, what? Yeah, I don't think it's a it's not a price thing for us. I think it's a format thing. Mm. I think like if it's a single serve on the go item, like in, like a, a can or a bottle or you know a, a functional like since we're working on some functional food stuff obviously we, we teased the bars on our channel about a month ago now i mean i think those things where it's a grab and go ghost experience i think it's really cool for us to we, we those can be everywhere because for us if you're walking through o'hare airport you've never seen ghosts before and you see this sitting there next to a monster and you're like oh shit sour patch kids i'm gonna maybe maybe this person now just looks us up and they become a follower yeah. or a member or they they actually become a customer whether they're buying it from us or gnc or tns or wherever i think that that's kind of the reason why we're excited for those grab and go items to kind of be available much more broadly but no like we obviously really want to be protective long term i don't think it's appropriate to sell like really innovative sports nutrition like stuff everywhere because the customer would totally. probably get in front of the right customers so i think that's the way we're viewing the on the go stuff or the single serve stuff versus you know, the core kind of power items. And I think stuff like the apparel will probably always be exclusive to the website. Right. So. Well, I think one of the first conversations that you and I ever had, Dan, after the Jim Stepani protein blends was talking about stuff being available at Walmart. I have to ask, has your standpoint on that changed? Because back in the day, you were pretty against it. Here's, here's what I'm going to say about Walmart. Um, today, uh, the end of 2020, my stance on that has not changed. Um, however, I think that there are some big questions right now, fair questions for anyone watching this, on what the future of sports nutrition retail looks like. Mm -hmm. Okay, in five years from now, is GNC going to still be the biggest, you know, sports nutrition retailer, uh, and, and from a footprint standpoint, whatever, in the U.S. And for everyone, you know, who, who this year watched GNC close some stores, GNC's got like twenty six to twenty seven hundred stores right now. Vitamin Shop has seven hundred and fifty. So, I mean, GNC is still on a, on a 4X multiple is as big as the second biggest here. But the question is, okay, so five years down the road, where are people going to be shopping for sports nutrition products um, like brick and mortar in person? We know that direct-to-consumer e-com is going to continue to grow. You're seeing the rise of platforms like Amazon, which um, you can buy Ghost Gamer on Amazon. But besides that, the rest of our products are not available from us. you got resellers. Yes, sir. Don't, don't do that. Buy from our website. Yeah, like it's, they're jacking the price up. It's weird. I don't know who's, who's buying that. But you know, we, you know, that, that stuff's a given. So the question is, what's the future of brick and mortar look like for sports nutrition? Uh, that's the question. Like, will it be Walmart? Will it be Target? Will it be GNC? Will right. it be GNC having a set inside one of those stores? I mean, this, this kind of becomes one of those Josh Shaw future of the industry yeah. kind of combos. But I think like that, that's the only things that we're watching to see kind of where things go long term. But no, like right now at the end of, at the end of, uh, you know, 2020, I still don't see, you know, Walmart as a fit for ghost. Cool. I don't think we, I think we'd be silly to say never with any retailer at this point, sure. because retail is evolving quickly. Um, it's not going anywhere. Retail's not dying, but it is evolving and changing. And some of these retailers are offering different types of experiences now than they were three to five years ago. And I think what we've always put paramount is like execution of the ghost brand and delivering the best ghost experience, wherever that might be. Right. Yeah. So wherever we can do that going forward, yeah. maybe those options make sense. But as Dan said, right now, we really haven't considered it much, but, um, never say never. For sure. I think it's a great th thought process. Cool. So uh, that's kind of caught us up to present day. What can we look at for 2021? Any well, teasers for me? No, yeah, look, it's no secret. Um, the V2's We're going to change the fucking world. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man, I love you, Ryan. Um, uh, look, the V2s are coming, right? Number First and foremost. So I think in 2020, you saw like expansion of all these new categories from us, which are really cool. Greens, Gamer, Glow, Energy, Multi, uh, Burn Black. Um, and, uh, and that was, that was, that was great. I think 21, you're now going to see kind of V2 of our core sports nutrition products. So legend V2, pump V2, size V2, really to kind of rip right off the bat. Um, yeah. obviously we're working on some big partnerships, uh, as new collabs as well, that we're really excited for the world to see. Um, you're going to see ghost energy, uh, you know, really get out there this year is kind of like a soft launch, if you will, at the end of 20 here, the real launch, the broader launch, uh, rolling into 21. And you're going to see the protein RTDs from us in, in 21. So um, 
And it's a big goal of ours. We're not going to do it until we check every box, as we've said. But it's a big goal of ours to get some, some ghost kind of, we'll say, you know, food items out there, whether it's a bar, whether it's something, you know, something else really cool that you don't even know about yet. Uh, it, uh, that's a goal of ours for 21 as well. I think cool. Dan and I had two very specific goals when we launched Ghost. One, uh, we wanted to build a brand that transcended sports nutrition. And two, we wanted to build a brand that could deliver the absolute best in a category across all categories. And I think in 21, we hope to check both those boxes. Perfect. I know that I'll have at least Dan on for the SIRS. I'd like to get Ryan on for that next one. We do the Legend V2. Are the, uh, Rock. What's the timing of these V2s? Are you going to be dropping them together or is it uh, you separate? Got it and you tried it. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah. I actually have a full testimonial recorded for you guys. I haven't sent to you because I don't know if you wanted to see it we, yet. We but. A preview? Did the world get a, like a preview right now of your thoughts? What do you think? I, I, I don't want to say anything without giving anything away. Um, I had a whole bunch of people respond and ask, like, is it more pump? Is it more energy? What is it more? I was like, it's more of, it's more everything. Like, what, what was your line? Like, more X, more life? Like, it was just more everything. For I think that started people. with more cookies, more life. Yeah, it was more cookies, more life. Then it was, like, yeah. more, yeah. It's been beat um, to hell since then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I Eric, like, um, Eric, uh, I don't know if you follow Eric Nardini, uh, the token CEO, uh, uh, you know, president of Barstool, um, yeah. uh, CEO of Barstool. Uh, she says that everything Dave Portnoy does is, uh, like, anthemic in, in nature. I'm like, man. <laughs> I can aspire, aspire to be that one day. I aspire yeah. to, I think, like, you know, more cookies, more life becomes a thing. Some yeah. Pumpkin, fish comes a thing. I don't know, you know, what's next? So I'll say there's uh, full doses of trademarked ingredients there that I've been waiting for a long time and combinations of trademarked ingredients there that I've been waiting for a long time that Dan and I really aligned on that we're both huge fans of. And I'm happy to see them come to the full Legend V2 and not just being collabs. I've been kind of teasing on my channel every time I do one of these collab breakdowns that I think it's kind of Dan testing the waters to see if things can be added into the platform of legend. And uh, everything that everyone's liked about the different partnerships or collabs over the last couple of years, I think it's safe to say it's being added into V2 and it's be kind of being what people want legend to be. What I expect from Ghost's pre-workout is to be a great, base pre-workout. It's enough caffeine for pretty much 90% of the population. It's not too much. You guys, I know you have a lot of females in your, in your category that if you went over the amount of caffeine you have in V2, I think it'd be a problem, but you could have a hardcore high caffeine at some point. Uh, there's enough pump in there where you can take it without pump V2. I had a great pump, but it's not, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not a pump V2. You can still add something to it. It's a great platform to add other stuff to. And um, the two added stims outside of the caffeine were like just enough to light me up, but not give me like anxiety or too high of a heart rate. It across the line, I don't want to say it was like the perfect balanced middle line because I kind of for sports enthusiasts sounds like boring because people in our category want to be pushing the boundaries at all times. Uh, it was it was like just enough for me. I really liked the pre workout. Awesome. I hope I hope it was a good a good good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, look, we appreciate it. With the League of Legend, we are trying to max out all the things that matter to most people, understanding mm -hmm. that, you know, there is no best. There, 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 and, and there's only really people who want over-the-top caffeine or want over-the-top. So so we make other products to act with it. Or, yeah. you know, and, and look, you, you spilled the beans there, maybe un, unknowingly, but uh, we do have a higher stint version of Legend coming out. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think, because, uh, I don't know, I, I think about... I don't know what we're going to call it yet. I mean, we've been calling it, like, hardcore internally. We're not going to call it that. I don't know what we're going to call it yet, but there is a higher stamp uh, version yeah. of like coming out uh, with, with nitrates in it, finally, too, Cool uh, in, in 21 as well. You know, what's been really funny for me is, because uh, you guys, well, Dan specifically leaked some size information on the last Twitch stream, and I had, like, I was, like, inundated with, con with messages about it. Like, I didn't realize how just excited people are for size. Like there's a lot of people that size. That's so interesting to me. And it is so interesting to me because I don't know. I, I always just consider pre-workout to be like the meathead's favorite, you know? And so to see you guys create excitement around creatine and it's, it's more, obviously more built out than creatine, but it's not a, a stim. It's not a pump. Uh, yeah, it was pretty close. Man, we really want 
you know, we want Ghost to be arguably the first in this industry to really excel in multiple categories across the board. We've seen great pre-workout brands. We've seen great uh, BCA or amino or intra-workout brands. There's obviously massive protein brands, but there isn't really somebody who is across the board, um, you know, doing, you know, great things in every single category and doing them at scale, by the way. Right, right. right. You, you don't, you, you, it hasn't been done before. And again, to take that Nike approach where Nike's got running, Nike's got football, basketball, skateboarding, like, you know, training, you name it. Like, why can't there be a sports nutrition or active, like functional brand that does the same and excels the same way? Very, very hard to do. Very hard to source and very hard to focus on, on all these different categories. And we get it. But that's, yeah. that gets us out of bed every day is we want to be uh, that brand for this category. Yeah. Uh, when we were talking before, as, as stuff was going on, I was starting to think to myself, how many brands have uh, launched into Vitamin Shop and done as well there as they did at GNC in any type of accolade? You guys mentioned a certain company with beads that tried to do that when their bar, uh, exclusivity was up and failed miserably at Vitamin Shop. I don't think I can think of anyone who's been able to check boxes in different categories and different distributors. And uh, it seems like you guys that's, just take it. That's because respectfully, uh, respectfully, they never had a firsthand relationship with their community. And right. that's what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. There are companies much bigger than Ghost, maybe will ever be, that have really built their company, uh, built their brand on the back of a third-hand relationship. They sell to a distributor, they sell to a retailer, that sells to the customer. Or right. they sell to a retailer, that sells to a customer. But they didn't have that direct relationship. And, you know, that's just not fun. Regardless of what the upside of the business of that model could be or, or, or has been for those guys, that's just not fun. Like, for us, like, we love – I mean, look, in, in uh, 21 minutes, Brian and I are going to go uh, jump on Twitch – uh, it's the seventh day, I think, of Twitch Miss. We uh, Ghost has been streaming every day for 12 days. We're going to go jump on, uh, run some Warzone. Ben, we'd love if you want to drop in for a few with us mm -hmm. uh, since, we're, since we're here. But, um, I mean, like, look, like, there's not really other business owners doing that. And, look, we, we're going to answer questions and have fun. And, I mean, that's what it's all about for us. That's why we're in this. And I think having that firsthand relationship – kind of gives us, I think, the, the ability to be successful in multiple channels. The other thing, though, is our mindset of, look, we're not just going to add a channel to sell on a new shelf. It's not about the money. It's more like, hey, if Ghost is selling a vitamin shop, what are we doing uniquely in vitamin shop that we're not doing in GNC? Did you know that vitamin shop has coolers in 100% of their locations? You can mm -hmm. buy Ghost Energy Cold in any vitamin shop. GNC right. only has coolers in 40%, but they merchandise the 12 packs. So right there, there's kind of a reason why you go to each one. And I think mm -hmm. if you view every channel that way, like what's that channel good at? What are they, what's unique to them? What can we do uniquely there? You're going to be successful in multiple channels. So free business advice for everyone watching at home. <laughs> in my experience with CEOs, most of them want to fit a square peg into a round hole with every single distributor. They, they offer their product and they want every distributor to sell it in their way. Uh, yeah. Move the fucking ego. Yeah. <laughs> Life advice. <laughs> cool. Well, I think that wraps up 2020 for, for me in, ter in terms of perspective on Ghost. Uh, is there anything you guys want to add? Uh, I mean, it's, it's been, uh, in, in a lot of ways, um, even personally, been one of the most challenging years on record for me. Um, but, you know, I'm really proud of not just the team, but the community and, and everybody in, in the Ghost universe. Uh, for really banding together this year and creating a really badass, impactful year amidst all the challenges. Um, so probably one of the, the more proud uh, moments was, you know, even Dan and I having a glass of wine the other night and kind of taking a look back at 2020, all of the adversity and all the challenges and, and craziness that came along with it and being where we sit today is, is a pretty proud moment. So it's been a, it's been a challenging year, a hard year. Um, but a you know all things considered a, a good year for ghost and uh you know we're super thankful for the opportunity to be able to continue to do what we do yeah i think you said that really well um i think uh behind the scenes or in front of the scenes like this has been a really challenging year for me also personally and professionally um i think every every which way uh but ending the year in a place of, of gratitude i think for the support that 
you know, the team internally to Ghost and, and you know, um, you know, you, Ben, and all the other, I think, uh, industry, um, industry, like, kind of, uh, peeps that honestly I've gotten to spend a lot of time with this year through all this it, and just the community and all the legends out there as well. I think that um, we're ending the place, ending this year in a place where, um, you know, we're, we're better than when we started the year, believe it or not. And mm -hmm. I don't say that lightly given, given how it's gone for a lot of the world. So um, upward and onward, we're grateful for all of it and, you know, grateful that, you know, as Brian said, we're still able to do what we do and we're still having a blast doing it. So, um, we are uh, hitting uh, 21, you know, running full speed, and we're excited for the future. Cool. I definitely have to add to that and say that it's funny. I met you guys at your first GNC convention before there was a – you guys say you're not a big company, but before you had a lot of people on board with you. And I remember having – like being able to stand with you guys and have like a very clear conversation with you guys talking about ghosts and stuff. And over the years, obviously everything gets really – it gets loud. There's a lot of stuff going on. We distance everything moves apart and this year was a really cool year of getting to actually spend time together actually getting to get back face to face whether that's you know microsoft game chat or if it's zoom or getting down to south carolina it's been pretty cool to get back to it uh we had a similar move with the sirs podcast just saying we're all stuck at home we might as well have have the best of it right and and try to have some community so it's been a pleasure seeing you guys do everything and we're excited to see what you guys knew in 2021 yeah, man. Appreciate the support, man. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, okay, so when is Energy V2 going to be rolling out uh, so we can wrap this up? Now, I mean, you've got one in your hands right now. We're producing as we speak. We're shipping as we speak. Uh, you know, we're going to be, I think the first C stores you're going to be able to find us in are going to be like Circle K's in okay. uh, Nevada and Arizona, also I think in Illinois, Missouri. Um, and then depending on like the chain resets, we'll be rolling out to more C stores and all the information will be available on Ghost Energy. Um, additionally, like Vitamin Shop, uh, GNC, and uh, finally back in stock, I think for, for all those independents, you know, kind of over the next week or two. So we've got holidays coming up. So right on the other side of that, um, all, all rolling out right now. I think people get the first look of uh, SPK Blue at that time and um, big things. Busy. Awesome. Good things. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me and uh, we'll talk soon. Appreciate it, bro. <laughs>